So we're going to look at LinkedIn uh, now hands-on. I'm going to take a quick look here, however, on this article about LinkedIn on Wikipedia. In case you didn't know, Wikipedia has been around for... Tw uh, LinkedIn has been around for 12 years. Uh, who would have thought? But for 12 years, this company has built itself, has built itself as the social network for professionals. So you're not really going to see the family photos here or the funny cat pictures and all of that. LinkedIn is really a business-oriented network. It's like your digital business card. Uh, you can put yourself as a person or your company as an entity on LinkedIn. We're going to create a personal profile and then if you would like to you can then create a business profile because you have to decide how will you use LinkedIn let's say for my, me and my example Victor's Bakery let's say I'm one of the the bakers in the bakery and I want to uh, reach out to get more high quality bakers to come and join my uh, my company I could use LinkedIn to connect with other foodies, bakers, others in the same business that I am in. And as I said, it's like a digital business card. I could then connect with these potential new bakers to then to try to bring them into my company. So that's one way that I could do it as a business owner, one way that I can use LinkedIn. I can also use LinkedIn as a company, Victor's Bakery itself, where I could post job listings and such, maybe looking for uh, bakers or you know weekend pastry chefs or whatever. So I can use LinkedIn in both of those ways as a person reaching out to other people or as a company reaching out to other people. Or I suppose also from a company reaching out to other companies as well. It's in 24 countries. It's global. Um, it. Um, It has uh, about 360, 40, uh, 360 million users globally, so that's a big amount of people using it. And as a matter of fact, it's also uh, very popular enough that it is also um, a publicly traded company, meaning you can buy stock in LinkedIn company. On the New York Stock Exchange, you can buy a LinkedIn stock. And if, if stocks stock price is a measure of a company's success, then LinkedIn is doing pretty well because their stock price is nearly $200 per share. So if you bought LinkedIn stock when it debuted in 2011, it was probably worth a quarter of that or even less. Well now, you might have made some money, but the stock market is a long game. And notice what it did today. It was up and down and up and down and up and down in one day. But if you look at it in longer terms, in one month, you know, kind of did that for a whole month. In a year, actually, a few months ago, it was up at $270 a share. So then it kind of crashed for some reason on that day. And then it went up and then it did a little, that looks like Batman to me right there. And then it went down and it went up. Well, in all the time that it's been a publicly traded company, however, when you look at stocks in the long term, it started at this low point here, and notice how it's much higher. Yes, there was a crash there, and there, and there. But in the long term, stock market theory tells us that in the long term, all things work out okay. Even though when we live through the bad economic times, in the long term, it's okay. So $81 a share back in 2011, and now $198 a share. So if that's an indicator of, of success of a company stock price, then LinkedIn is doing well. If user base is an indicator of doing well, 364 million users is a lot of users. That means it's doing well. Multilingual, so that it reaches more audiences, that means also could be a measurement of doing well. So in short, LinkedIn is a very good company then, a very good social network to get into, either for personal, purposes, business purposes, as a person or as a company entity. So apparently here, let's see, revenue, $2 billion in revenue, really. Income, $15 million in income. And it's one of the, 
in this ranking here, it's the 14th most visited website in the world. So, very powerful and important. If you never thought about LinkedIn that hard, about using it for your business or for yourself to reach an audience, think about it. We're seeing statistics here why it might be valuable for you. So, great, let's create an, a profile. Let's go on your web browser to LinkedIn. Well, before we create one, let me show you one more thing. Everyone that creates a LinkedIn account then can get their own vanity address. Or a name for yourself on the LinkedIn network. So for example, linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. That one's mine. Now I bring it up because you want to claim your name. You want to claim your vanity address as soon as you can so that there isn't yet another John Smith that took your profile name. This is the, this is the constant uh, land grab that happens with social networks. You might not be the only famous raised pizzas out there. You might not be the only Campos Realty out there. You might not be the only Victor Campos out there. So when these networks have the ability for you to register a profile, especially these big ones, you should try to claim your name as soon as possible, your personal name or your company name or whatever entity you're presenting online. So a few years ago when, when they gave us the ability to create a custom name like that, I, I snapped it up. I wanted to take Victor Campos because if you search LinkedIn for Victor Campuses, there's lots of them out there. A lot of them seem to be in Brazil for some reason. And so I claim that name and it's got my simple name there and if you do a Google search for me, this often is my top result. Um, and notice the format, uh, which I always found odd, but the format is linkedin.com slash in, don't forget that part, and then the name. Other networks like Facebook are often simply facebook.com Victor Campos, but for whatever reason LinkedIn's is linkedin.com slash in and then slash some name. I'll show you how to claim that name because it's not obvious, unfortunately. If you go to my profile, you'll see here an example. Here's another Victor Campos, and another one, and another one, and another one. But um, we can use my profile as an example of some things that we might want to do, and of course we'll talk more. But this profile is very public. Maybe you would think, well, I've got Facebook, but I've got it private. I don't want any, anyone to see what I'm doing on Facebook, and that's great really on a personal network like Facebook keep it private as possible but this is a professional social network you have to think about why am I using Facebook well for me for example I would like to use Facebook to connect with people that perhaps need my services a website or running social media or whatever it is I'm trying to to accomplish so pretty much everything on my profile is completely public so think about using LinkedIn in the most public way possible, if it's beneficial to you. Obviously, don't put embarrassing things, irrelevant things, but I'm putting everything up here that I would have no trouble that anyone look up and read. So think about using LinkedIn that way. Of course, then reserve Facebook for the embarrassing stuff. Keep it private. Use Twitter for the embarrassing stuff. Keep it private. But um, think about using LinkedIn really as the most public persona of you. Because if someone were then to search you, if they go to any search engine, type your name. And if one of, if, if one of these results is you, is it presenting the best picture of you? Or is it presenting that embarrassing Twitter photo? So there it is. One of the top results is my official LinkedIn account next to the actor, and next to the doctor, and next to the photographer. And so let's examine how I've used my profile here. I've got my name. Uh, my full name is Victor M. Campos Jr., but I put there my most common professional name there. So whatever your professional name, if your official name is William Jefferson Clinton, but you're known as Bill Clinton, then you're going to uh, use the professional name that you're going to be known by. There's something that we'll look at which is a 
job description. Uh, I've got here Director of Technology at PMD Interactive. Who gave me that? Well, my company. It's my company. I gave myself that title. Um, what location? Greater San Diego, related to internet work, where I've worked, previous work, experience, websites, recommendations and such. So make a note when we do this. One of the powerful ways to use LinkedIn is to get recommendations. So again, think about LinkedIn as a resume and a business card. A business card to show your, important, your most important aspects, but then also for people to vouch for you like letters of recommendation and such, we'll see if we can get that from, a, from LinkedIn. And I would not use LinkedIn the same way as most social networks, as in most of the time we want to accumulate as many connections as possible, as many followers as possible. On some networks like Instagram and, and uh, Twitter and such, yes, you want to get as many followers as possible because that is a captive audience. But if you're using LinkedIn for personal, like me, I'm not going to accept everyone's request. And I know a lot of you probably sent me one right now. I'm probably going to ignore most of them. Because you should manage LinkedIn really, honestly, selfishly. What's in it for me to connect with you? What's in it with you to connect with you? Why would I connect with you? Uh, and yes, it sounds mean and harsh and all of that, but I'm going to say so be it. Use LinkedIn for yourself. What's in it for you? Just because your, your friend from high school requested you on LinkedIn, why? What do you have to offer your connection with me? Do you... Is that old high school friend in a Fortune 500 company that might help me out? Or is that friend you know, a manager at a fast food place. I'm not looking for that kind of connection at the moment. So yes, it's okay to use LinkedIn selfishly and ignore all of those requests that you get. But really make connections with people that will help you. Because the reason most likely they try to connect with you is because you have something to offer them. Once we're connected with people here, I can have a connection with someone and then they can have a connection with someone, and I can reach that person. I cannot reach myself to that CEO directly unless there's a middleman. That's one of the points of using LinkedIn. My connections allow me to reach other people that might have something beneficial for me. So I've got 87 connections instead of 5,000. We're going to see about writing a summary, like a resume, experience, like a resume, any projects, skills. So these are keywords to be found by if someone is searching for a graphic designer in San Diego. I've got that keyword in my profile. I've got recommendations about that skill. Languages, education, there's a lot that we can fill out here like a like a resume. And we'll talk about groups, which uh, again are other other aspects of of, of LinkedIn that will uh, be beneficial for us um, to grow our, our network. I noticed you didn't put dates on some of those things. Dates. Most things have dates because they need to be relevant uh, to see if it connects. If there's no date, most likely means it's ongoing. But if there are dates, that means it it started and ended. Okay, so now actually, let's go over to LinkedIn.com if we're not there yet. If you already have a profile, go ahead and log in with your email and password. If you don't have one, I'm about to create one. Uh, I was asked, should I use my existing one or create a new one? That's up to you. I sort of recommend, however, if you've already got one, I sort of recommend let's create a new one because you might have created it months or years ago 
and there's a bunch of brand new features that are available and not readily apparent if you've got an old profile. So we'll, I, I should have time also to mention how to delete a profile. And so maybe if we create a brand new one from scratch now, you can fully set it up in the most optimized way, delete the old one. Or learn what I'm going to show you here with this account, and then delete this account and apply it to your old account. Either way will work. But I'm about to create a brand new one. You can do so also, or, uh, or sign in. So it's asking first name, last name, email, password. So the email has to be unique, right? Yes, if you've used the email before, it's going to say you've already used that email, log in. Yeah. So you can use a different email if you have another email address. Yes. How do you delete your accounts if you did one like 10 years ago? Um, because, you know, I still have the same email address, but I don't want that old account. We. I think it'll be best to, to talk one-on-one uh, -on -one for your particular needs, but when I get to logging in and such, there's a setting screen somewhere that will let us delete the account. It's not too obvious because they don't want you to leave, but I'll, I'll bring up the delete account. But then for your particular one, I'm thinking most likely you want to log into it, change it to some other throwaway email address, so then you free up your email address for this real one, and then delete that one, and then you've got your email address back. So it's going to ask me for an email address. So I'm just going to make one up here, but you want to use a real email address. Just for the purposes of this class, because I've already got uh, an account. You said we could delete it? Yes. So maybe that's what people can do if they want to. Just make up an email address here. You're not going to be able to to use all aspects of LinkedIn, however, because it'll want you to verify your email. And that email, I just made it up, doesn't exist. So I think we'll be fine if you do make up an address, but if you want the full features, you want a real email address that then you can verify. So if I'm new then, it's going to ask me some information um, to fully set up the profile. First, it seems to have detected a uh, country and zip code. If that's not right, put in your proper zip code. It asks if you're a student or not. If your main uh, job description, for example, is a student, there's an option to turn that on. Um, I'm going to say no. So I've got job title and company. This would be your most latest company. So if you've had uh, a lot of job experiences throughout the years, here it would be asking you for your latest one. And so I'm going to say here, job title, let's see, Baker. I'm going to start writing, and I might suggest in Baker, Bakery manager, bakery clerk, maybe do I mean owner, am I a company owner, business owner, franchise owner, am I a CEO, founder, basically I'm showing you, you can put almost anything here, anything that you feel is relevant that best describes your job title of your current job. Yes. Okay, so if I have an old LinkedIn, will I be able to capture a vanity? If you've got the old LinkedIn, yes, you should be able to. When, when we get to that screen, you should be able to select your unique vanity URL, yes. Even though I don't start it today? Yes. Okay. Is there a way to merge the LinkedIn account? I'm not exactly sure, actually. I haven't had to do it recently, so I, I'm not sure, but we can we can always look it up later. Merge LinkedIn accounts. Possibly, it looks like. There might be a link there that explains how to do it. I'm just going to write here, business owner. 
independent business owner, small business. The point of, of this is you can choose anything, but it's also giving you suggestions of some relevant keywords. And if you think if you're thinking ahead also um, of the larger concepts of SEO, search engine optimization, search engine optimization is the art and the science of getting found online. You saw when I searched Victor Campos, a lot of results came up, but one of them was me. So I engage in a lot of tactics of positive SEO to get found on search engines. One of them is the keywords. What defines you or your business when someone searches something? So as you type in a business description, any of these that pop up are these keywords that have activity, that have searches, that have the uh, propensity to help you get found. So if any of them apply, I would choose one of that. You know, if you're if you're doing something like social media manager, intern, consultant, specialist, those are good. But if you're doing something like social media ninja, like I said, no results. So it might not be the best to brand yourself this way, if, especially if you're trying to get found to get hired to do this. I would choose, in this case, social media manager, because it is a known name. Social media consultant could work. Social media specialist. And can that be changed to Yes, we'll be able to change any aspect of our profile at any point. Yes? I might have missed this, but so LinkedIn, there's no LinkedIn for your business, only for individuals connected to a business. Um, exactly. You have to create a personal account first, and then you can create business accounts. You wouldn't create one directly like this. Okay. On the next screens, after we've got our personal account, then we would then we can create a business okay. listing. So for example here, company. Victor's Bakery. Mm -hmm. If it is a company that exists already within the LinkedIn database, it might pop up so that you can select it. Is there a foot the last company that you're working where you're not employed there now? That's up to you. Um, personally, I would say that you would do that, but then we would define work here January 2001 to February 2012. So I would put limits that I'm to make it clear that I'm not working there anymore, but that was my last job. So if you do have a company that you work for that is a large known entity, not even large, this is my company right there, but I've created a listing in LinkedIn for my company, which we'll do later. So at the moment, if you're trying to add your own business and it doesn't exist, that's fine. Later on, we will make it exist on LinkedIn. Industry. You may get industry, especially if it's a if it's not a company that's already in LinkedIn. There's a lot to choose from here. Let's see something about cooking or food. I found food and beverages. I could conceivably also do something else like small business local business and that sort of thing, but you should be specific if you can with your business. So I'll go with food and beverages. And select create your profile. This is another reason why then you might want to create a new account because here then as the years go on they try to make the service better and better for people every network does that. If you created a Twitter account two years ago, you miss out on some of the new things now. But here, for example, what's the main thing you want to do with LinkedIn? We'll use this info to personalize your experience and we will keep it private. Are you using LinkedIn to find a job, to build a professional network, stay up to date? Well, you're not sure yet. In my case, 
build a professional network. I'm trying to find talented bakers and pastry chefs and such that I could hire for my company. Maybe uh, on the opposite side of that coin, I could be an up and coming. I just graduated the culinary, you know, uh, CIA, what's it called? The Culinary Institute of America. Let's say I graduated there and I want to get hired as a uh, head pastry chef or whatever. So I'd be finding a job. And again, uh, LinkedIn, you want to use it as a social network where you can connect with relevant people. So you can decide here to add your address book or not. And as I said earlier, use LinkedIn judiciously so that you're connecting with people that really will benefit you. Here, simply adding your whole address book with Aunt Horace and everyone might not be the best thing. But if you want to, you can connect your address book and it'll say, these people are on LinkedIn. They won't, you won't automatically connect. It'll still ask you, send a request. So you may or may not do that. If you don't do it here, you can do it on another screen. But I'm going to skip. They make it very nondescript. And they also tell you it's best when you connect with connections. Skip. Because I created a, I created this, and actually I made a completely fake email address. I said, "Okay, confirm your email." Well, I can actually get around this. If you created a brand new one and you don't want to deal with this part, and you got up to the screen here, you can just go back to LinkedIn.com, and that'll go around that little roadblock. Just want to confirm here. Anyone need a little help? Did everyone either create an account or log in or just following along? Question? Yes. So for me, or most of us, it's going to keep bothering us at the top here, especially if we created a new account. Don't forget to confirm your email. Well, I'm going to skip that because I have a fake email. But if you've got a real email, um, you do want to confirm it as soon as you can. We have then a bunch of boxes and a bunch of things to look at and fill out, which we'll get to. But it's always useful, especially if you've got a new account, it's always useful if they present some sort of like guide, guided tour. To, to check it out at least once, here it's telling me messaging is a new and improved. So things are going to pop up which you can read or you can simply close. Just go to linkedin.com and then it's going to skip it. Just change your address to linkedin.com and you, and you can skip it. 
So we need to get acclimated a little bit with the LinkedIn interface. There's a lot of buttons and a lot of boxes and a lot of links. Notice at the top we got home. When you're on home, it should take you back to this screen here. This is your home screen where once you've got connections, you're going to see the updates of your connections. That's the home screen. Very similar to Facebook. When you're on the home screen, you see what everyone's been posting on Facebook. Same thing on LinkedIn. The home screen on Twitter, same thing. You see the content of the connections you have. You've got profile. If you hover over profile, we've got edit profile. Who's viewed your profile? Your updates. Um, simply click on, on profile for the moment. Because if you click on profile, this is what it, it could look like for someone visiting your profile. They search for Victor Campos, they found me on LinkedIn, this is what they see. At the moment, mine's very basic. It has my name, business, location, nothing else really. I would spend some time to flesh this out as much as possible, so let me point out a few things. Um, to make it a little bit more visually interesting now, LinkedIn allows you to put in a background photo. Um, this top one-fourth or one-half or so will allow you to put in a nice big picture to catch your attention. So that could be a picture of one of my products, a picture of my storefront, or just an interesting photo, something to personalize. I'm not going to set it at the moment because I don't have a company photo ready to upload. But that's one of the things you should do. It's, it's a relatively new feature. The older LinkedIn accounts didn't have it. You should add this just to personalize it. It's going to pop up. Mine says skills. Yours might say something else. Just ignore it for the moment. Don't skip it. Just ignore it for the moment. And then on the right side, it tells me my profile is set up as a beginner. It's not very complete yet. As I complete as many aspects of my profile, this will fill up and eventually, I forget how high it gets to, maybe pro or something, but that's basically filling in your profile as much as possible. And again, you want to fill this in as much as possible, as truthfully as possible, in the goal of putting this publicly as your, your best foot forward. People are going to judge a book by its cover. Here's your cover. This is going to be your resume. This is going to be your number one profile, really to put your best foot forward online. When someone searches your name, and if you've got this fully set up and optimized, this might be the number one result that appears instead of that embarrassing Facebook photo. So this is a goal to complete our profile. Would this serve also as a way to... How would you send it if you want someone to see your resume? We're not quite there yet, but we'll talk about that. Um, we can edit any of these aspects. When we created it a little while ago, we can still edit. Notice if you, this is the, the confusing thing that we'll see in several parts of, of LinkedIn. Sometimes it's not obvious what you can do until you hover your mouse over an element. Like, I'd like to change my name, and there's no real indicator to tell me, well, all you need to do is put your mouse on it and click edit. So if I hover my mouse over just about anything, often I will get a way to edit it. I don't need to edit any of that, but I could if I want to. We'll talk about experience and education, of course. Photo. The best LinkedIn photos are professional-looking photos of yourself, not one of these poorly lit selfies that you took in a cave, nothing that looks way too artistic with filters and such. You want to try to have the most professional looking um, photo here. In a sense, maybe something like from you know your driver's license, but obviously better looking. <laughs> no one ever gets a good driver's license photo, it seems like. But here you have the ability to then choose a good photo. <coughs> the thing that I would say about doing a good photo, it's all about the light. If I'm gonna take a photo of myself, I'm I'm going to take out my phone and take a good photo, but probably not in here. Even if I turn on all the lights, it's still not going to be as good of, a, of lighting as if I stepped outside into the sunlight. 
So I would take a photo in the sunlight, but not staring at the sun, then I'm going to be squinting. I'm just going to try to find a way to take a good photo in the sunlight uh, that is basically a, a bust photo, so my head and shoulders and such. Um, you can be artistic to some degree, but again, this is a professional social network, and so you want to add a professional looking photo. No connections, but we'll work with that later. Yes. I would say that's a great photo for Twitter. I would tell them try to use really a current photo because it's if I'm trying to hire them, and they've got a photo of a kid, uh, and it's it's them, but I don't know. I wouldn't quite see that very professionally. I'm trying to hire the person, not the child from. 20 years ago. All right, so at the moment, my LinkedIn profile address is linkedin.com slash pub slash victor dash campos slash 107 slash 278. It really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So your profile is something as esoteric. How do you think we edit that? Hover your mouse over it. This is what I'm saying, that some things are not obvious. And I want to change that. I want to get a nice, memorable LinkedIn name. So hover your, name, hover your mouse over that weird name and click that little gear. Let's update your public profile settings. Click on that. We have lots of settings to work with. But on the right side, create your custom URL. Sometimes they call it a custom URL, sometimes a vanity URL, sometimes a personalized address. But here's where I can claim my name. I'm going to click there, and it's going to create linkedin.com slash in, and then try to write your name. Now, I, maybe I would love to simply be Victor. So I'm going to click Save. Oops, that name is taken. Okay, it recommends Victor 3, V Compost 2. And so that name is taken. I can try Victor Campos. That name is taken. So that's, that's the challenge, and always with social networks. That's that land grab. Um, someone might have already taken that name, either legitimately or not. And honestly, it's often hard to get back a name that someone else got, especially if it's if they're using it legitimately. It's also hard to get your name if someone is using it illegitimately or for bad purposes or whatever. These social networks, they, they've got to really address the issue that there's a finite number of names and there's lots of people and lots of names that have been taken that no one is using especially like on Twitter, for example. But you'll have to settle for some name, perhaps, that doesn't quite fit. I mean, some name that isn't quite the exact name you wanted. And you've got up to 30 characters, no spaces, symbols, or special characters. Wow. <laughs> can't believe it's not claimed. Great. Snatch it up. Uh, how do I do that? <laughs> you type it and then you click save. Let me see. All right, so hopefully you, you've done that. If you haven't done it now, you, you should do it at some point. So you want to add your custom name there and then click save. Um, should I make it like a visible or not visible at this point? I would make it visible. Um, it doesn't quite matter when you do it, but I would do it now so that you don't forget to do it later. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that to that profile screen. So just click on the word profile up on the menu.
we're back to our profile screen and uh, for me I got a new pop-up that says it's easier to edit your profile and it might pop up to give me some more tips I'm just gonna close it for for now but again this is your business card slash resume so there's this part about adding experience and education I'm not gonna go through every one of these screens but a lot of it is is very straightforward if you click on experience it'll ask you to fill in and you can put in as many as you want a company name job title location when did you work there and the description we're not going to spend a lot of time to fill this in because we've got a lot to look at but i will say about your experience notice there is see examples if you see examples positions position descriptions should provide some detail of the position so users viewing your profile can get a quick idea of what the position involves so plenty of examples brand development website traffic growth website UI and advertising revenue developed brand strategy and statistics so yes very very literally like a resume when you had to write a resume you have to think about action words and specific terminology that apply to that job and the same thing goes here if you do add any of this experience any of these positions that you've had you want to think about in those terms about the best words active tense the best verbs and that might not be easy to do if we don't have too much experience here so during the breaks I can help out to think about what to write We can add as many as we want. We put them in order of the latest position. We've also got education, so that'll be a, a section here of education. You can add as many educational institutes as you'd like. Any degrees or fields of study, grades, activities, descriptions, and again, if it says examples, check the examples to get some ideas. Education description. Education description can provide some detail about your studies, so, use, so users viewing your profile can get a better sense of your background and experience. Provost Award for Community Service, 1999. President of Student Youth Alliance, mentoring over 100 local middle school students each week. So you can be as wordy as you want here. The people that will care to read what, you, what, what, what they really need to will read it. It's not like a resume where they say, really keep it down to one page. You know, I just filled in a, I just turned in a resume recently, and I had to cut down four pages into, into one. There's so much you can fit on one sheet of paper. But on your LinkedIn resume, you can put as much as you want because that will help you connect with the people that really care about what you are putting on LinkedIn. As you make any of these changes and you have connections, you have a network, the default, if you notice, here says notify your network? Yes or no. Publish an update to my network about my profile changes. So LinkedIn is a professional social network, but it still has the aspects of social networks. You have connections, you have followers and such. When you do something on LinkedIn, your followers will get notified of that. If you don't want your followers to see that you're changing everything here, well, turn it off. And these updates here will not show up as notifications for your, for your, for your followers, for your connections. If you do want them to know, because maybe you are looking to get a new uh, job in, in something, and you've added um, some experience, and I leave that as, as yes, that could get sent over to my connections that could help me do something about it, to, to help me land a job, for example. By network, in this case, they don't mean all your, you know, like in Facebook, everybody knows everybody, but they don't mean your whole life. <laughs> Everyone that you've connected to on LinkedIn. 
So it could be a lot of people, or it could be a little bit of people, but it's everyone that you've connected to, just on LinkedIn, because we're only on LinkedIn at the moment. So those are a few things that we can fill out here. And then we've also got at the top, most likely it's also going to be telling you or asking you a few things. So add a photo. Where have you worked? Do you have any certifications? So this is just another way, if you don't see this, this is another way to fully fill out your profile, which you will also see here under View More. Look at all that you can fill out. Volunteering experience. And it kind of then gives you a pep talk. Well, why would I fill any of this out? Volunteering. One in five managers hired someone because of their volunteer experience. So if I've done any of these things, show it off. There's no limit like this piece of paper here. This can be as much as you want. And it should be as much as you can. And as much as that is true, of course. With some embellishment, but... Uh, language, uh, volunteering opportunities. This one is organizations could be looking for someone like you. Organizations, test scores, awards, courses. There's a lot that we can fill in here. Patents, causes you care about. Well, why would that be useful? I put up here that I that I that my that a cause that I care about is PETA. Well, why would that matter? I could get connections, I could get people that view my profile, and then maybe their causes and um, interests line up with mine, and that could be enough to make a connection, to get hired, to get, um, uh, to make some sort of a deal. So there's a lot of possibilities. We won't go into into them really, but they should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, awards and and such. Fill it in. Description. Be as verbose as you'd like. And all of that is in service. Again, putting your best foot forward. You're, you're a book, and you're going to get judged by your cover. Well, put out a good cover. Are we put Toastmasters? Under certification, courses, or education? Toastmasters really, I think, would be more of an organization. Because that's part of your professional it identity. Could What's that? It could be a volunteering thing, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really think about uh, Toastmasters as volunteering. I don't know. Is it nonprofit? Is it a nonprofit? You get certified after 10 speeches. Mm. You can also do that. Uh, that would that might be a, a certification. So it's very open ended, but I kind of off the top of my head think it might be best as an organization. And so uh, we'll take a break soon. If you can, if you want to fill in more, but you want to fill in this profile as complete as possible because eventually you'll be able to see who's viewed my profile. So, under who's viewed your profile, I would call that um, analytics or insights. And if you took last month's course, we talked about Facebook can give you insights into your traffic. So can Twitter, Pinterest, etc. You have an aspect of that on LinkedIn as well, and it's under who has viewed your profile. This is what would show um, who viewed it, their statistics, how your profile ranks in a niche, for example, and tips and such. We'll talk about adding updates, status updates and such. They would all be listed under your updates. When you're on home, 
your updates are mixed in with the updates of everyone you're connected to and all groups and such. But if you want to only look at your own updates, you can go under Profile, Your Updates. Because maybe you need to go back and spell something properly, or maybe remove something for some reason. So I'm going to mention these briefly, we'll take a break, then we'll get in detail. And then Connections is a screen where I can see all of my connections, who have I um, uh, made a, a connection with, uh, maybe finding alumni or other connections from uh, other networks, jobs, looking for jobs, posting jobs, there's a whole job section, we'll look at that later interests this is going to be very useful again to grow your your audience when we get to it um, I don't remember if I mentioned it last month did I mention the network called SlideShare or was that another class it might have been another class this class but anyway SlideShare is this uh, social network where people share PowerPoint presentations mm -hmm. that's the purpose of SlideShare and it actually got so big and important that LinkedIn bought them so now LinkedIn is the owner of SlideShare. So that's another can of worms, another social network to, to learn about and get good at. But under interests, when we get back, we'll see, well, what are groups and what's Pulse and all of that. It's just another aspect of, of making LinkedIn more useful for you. There's some business services like post a job, advertise, and most of these, when they are actual services, are probably not going to be free. So I'll, I'll touch on them, but if you're really interested, you can look on your own. And then LinkedIn has this whole tier of uh, accounts. Everyone right now probably has the basic account, which many features. But then there's a premium version of LinkedIn, which gives you more features, like being able to connect with more people and other things. Uh, let's see if I can see a price. Be careful on that, though. Well, I'm not going to put in my credit card. No, no. Yeah. Well, I did. I did the twenty nine ninety nine forever now, um, and I don't know how to delete it or how to stop it. Okay. We can uh, probably look during the break to, to figure that out, but um, there is a... Uh, 30-day free trial, and then after that, $30 a month. So it's a, kind of a lot of money, uh, over $300 a year. Yeah. But it, it tells you here then what are the benefits. And for some people, it might be a very good benefit, and it might be a benefit to try it out for one year and then turn it off after that. But during the break, we can, we can look that up. All right, going on. Uh, Moving on here, so the um, ladies, moving on. The, uh, the network here then has a lot of screens to look at. We're not even done all the possible screens because we've got this search box at the top that we're also going to explore, and then other tabs over here. So let's take a break. When we come back, we'll look at other screens, talk about other useful things of Facebook and how we can use it effectively. So it's 2.34, we'll be back at 2.44, and we'll learn some more LinkedIn.